Hey everyone, Dr. D here. In this video, I'm going to show you T helper activation, or sometimes called helper T cell activation, followed by B cell activation. Let's solve this mystery together, shall we? So, remember that your professional antigen presenting cells have a molecule on their surface called MHC2 for major histocompatibility complex 2. And on that, they present foreign antigen. So this blue protein, for example, would be a viral protein, a viral protein. So for example, let me give you an example. If this was a macrophage, professional antigen presenting cell, it may have brought a viral molecule inside, a viral, uh, uh, I should say a virion, a virus inside. Once it brings the virus inside, or the virus infects the cell, the virus will be broken down into antigen. Those antigen will be placed onto MHC2, MHC2, and MHC2 will go to the surface of the cell presenting that antigen to the world. Okay, so again, a virus was either phagocytosed by the macrophage or even infected the macrophage, it doesn't matter, got into the macrophage somehow. That virus gets chopped up, part of it, each part's called the antigen, Part of it gets conjugated with MHC2, and MHC2 presents that antigen, that antigen was a part of that virus, presents it to the outside, right? Because that's what MHC2 is, it's like a trophy case. It presents things to the outside world. And what recognizes the antigen presented by MHC2 on your professional antigen presenting cells? That's right, your T helper or helper T cells. It's the helper T cells that recognize, that have, let, let me show you here, they have a T cell receptor, a T cell receptor that recognizes foreign antigen specifically presented by your professional antigen presenting cells by MHC2, okay? now. Please be aware that not all helper T cells can recognize the same antigen. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Helper T cells each identify one specific antigen, one random non-self antigen. So it might be one in a million or one in 10 million or more. One of those T helpers in your body might recognize that antigen. It's like having car keys, right? Everyone could take out their car keys and everyone's car key is going to be shaped a little bit differently. Well, then each of us would be an example of a T helper cell. I have a different car key. You have a different car key. Every T helper cell recognizes a different antigen. So only the T helper cell with the per, uh, precise T cell receptor that could recognize this foreign antigen is going to bind and uh, recognize this uh, foreign antigen on this macrophage. So what happens right here, this T helper cell goes from a naive T helper cell to a halfway, one half activated cell. So now the T cell, the T helper cell is no longer naive, okay? is no longer naive. It is now halfway activated, okay? They call that sometimes the first handshake, all right? So, how does the T helper cell become fully activated, you might wonder? Well, that's where the next part of the story comes in. This is called B cell activation. B cell activation. So you've got B cells. Here's a B cell. And what's on the surface of a B cell? Do these look familiar? B 
cells have antibodies on their surface. Antibodies. Sometimes antibodies are called B cell receptors. Makes sense. But antibodies recognize specific antigens. Just like I said, the T cell receptor is like your car keys. It only recognizes one car, right? Antibodies are the same way. The tip here is a, is a variable tip, right? So every B cell has a different tip, has a different variable portion at its tip. So every B cell recognizes a very, very specific antigen, just like every T cell rec recognizes a very, very specific antigen with its T cell receptor. B cells have antibodies called B cell receptors. They recognize something specific too. So let's just say this B cell has the specific uh, antibody that recognizes this very same virus. You remember this virus from back here? Let's say that virus is floating around in your body. That virus sticks to the antibody, right? Because that virus is floating around in your body. You have an infection, right? That virus sticks to the antibody on the B cell receptor. They adhere. What does the B cell do? The B cell's job is to take this antibody virus conjugation, bring this inside. So you've now internalized, you've internalized the virus. And what else do you do? You chop it up into parts, right? You chop it up. And guess what? B cells are, just like macrophages, B cells are professional antigen presenting cells. So they also have inside of them MHC2. So they'll take this viral protein, conjugate it with MHC2, and guess what they'll do? They will present on MHC2, look, this is MHC2, they will present that antigen from that virus. And guess what? It has to be the exact same antigen as this macrophage was presenting. You see, these two are, have to be identical. These two have to be identical. The virus antigen that's presented by this macrophage has to match the virus antigen presented by this B cell to be recognized by the same helper T cell. This helper T cell had the right key, right? The right T cell receptor to recognize this viral antigen presented on this macrophage. This helper T cell was halfway activated. Well, guess what? It's about to become fully activated. You know why? Because with its T cell receptor, oops, receptor, it's going to recognize, you see, it's going to recognize the same antigen presented by B cells. That's the second handshake it needed. So the helper T cell proliferates and differentiates. So what does that mean? It's going to copy itself because now it realizes it has a very important key. It has a very important T cell receptor. It has the T cell receptor that can recognize this intruder, this virus. So it's going to make many, many, many copies of itself. Okay? And it's going to make effector helper cells. And it's going to make memory helper T cells. So what it does, once it gets that second handshake, it multiplies, it differentiates. Some of those cells become memory cells so that they linger in the body to remember the insult for next time so that you can become immune to that virus for the next time. Some of those cells hang out and take care of business. And by take care of business, I mean release cytokines and release other hormones that are required to do something about this viral infection now. Okay. What else? By the way, I told you I would tell you about B cell activation, right? When the B cell recognized the virus with its antibody, that binding and internalization 
was one half activation of the B cell. So the B cell was one half activated. Its second handshake occurred when this semi activated helper T cell recognized the antigen on the B cell. Now the B cell becomes activated. And what do B cells do when they're activated? That's right, they proliferate and differentiate. They form these massive cells called plasma cells. I'll tell you what those do in a minute. And they form other cells called memory B cells. You know what the memory B cells go do, right? They linger in the body to remember the insult for next time so that you are effectively immune to this virus the next time. This is how you get acquired immunity. What does the plasma cell do? Do you, do you remember the antibodies on the surface of these B cells? Do you remember all these antibody on the surface of these B cells? Well, it was a B cell receptor stuck to the surface of that B cell. Well, now guess what? The plasma cell produces tens of thousands of these antibodies per minute. And it's releasing those antibodies into the bloodstream. So look, the antibodies that were on the surface of this B cell are now secreted into the bloodstream. Does that make sense? So you've got antibodies released into the bloodstream. It's like if I made went to Lowe's and I made a bunch of copies of my key and I just made it rain with my key, right? I just threw a ton of my key out, right? Um, why? Because I know my key recognizes this virus. And that's what, that's another term we're gonna learn is called opsonization. If let's say, let's say this antibody is flowing around in my blood, what if it encounters the virus? What's gonna happen once that antibody encounters the virus? It's going to stick to the virus. And that's called opsonization. Opsonization is when a foreign molecule, foreign antigen, is recognized by a molecule, such as an antibody. Antibody attaches to foreign molecule, the virus, right, virus. And then macrophages recognize the antibody. So basically, macrophages recognize the antibody on the virus. Macrophages will gobble up the antibody virus uh, complex. All right, I know that's a lot. Replay this video, make it clear. This is how helper T cells are activated in general. This is how B cells are activated in general. And this is how opsonization works and how this feedback loop works, all right? This is how adaptive immunity works in your body. This is how, once you've been infected by a particular virus, you are immune to that strain of that virus in the future because the memory cells linger in your body for years, decades sometimes, and they remember that virus. So the next time that virus is in your cells, the memory cells are quick to act. They're in your tissues inside of your body. They make the antibodies right away and they take care of business right away, all right? So that's how it works. And again, please understand that this is a really, really watered down version of how this activation works. And uh, immune, immune response is very, very, very intricate. And there's much more to it than just this. But I just wanted to give you a really, really broad uh, perspective. All right, so throw any comments you have down in the comment box below, any questions you have in the comment box below. I appreciate you watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.